Now there's not a whole lot better than being able to share your hobby of watch collecting with the person that you love. Now today we are looking at my fiance's luxury watch collection, how it's evolved over the short time frame that she's been collecting watches and how it all started. Now one of the things that I do truly love about watch collecting is that once you get that itch, once that bug bites you, you tend to spend all your money and it's never enough. I'm not saying we've spent all of our money and I'm not saying it's never enough but it's never enough. There's always that next watch to chase. So we're looking at my fiance, Jamie's watch collection and a prediction of what's to come. Hey, I'm Chase and this is All Things Random, mostly watch reviews with some random stuff sprinkled in between. Thanks for stopping by. I would ask you guys to hit that subscribe button. It's free, it really does help the channel. And hit that notification bell because people don't get notified of my videos for some reason. Now let's hop right into my fiance's luxury watch collection. Now, not all of these are luxury watches and we're not going from her first watch. We're going to go from the most expensive to the cheapest watch. And it's pretty surprising. I think what's in the collection. So let's talk about the first one. Now, the first one is going to be the Cartier tank solo. This is her first true luxury watch that I bought her about a year and a half ago. It was my first large gift to her to show her that I was proud of an accomplishment that she had made in her college. And, uh, um, and I knew that she wanted a Cartier tank. Uh, she wanted the two tone, but me as a middle class guy, the two tone was about $4,000 more. And I did buy this on the used market. This thing used is about $3,000. Uh, so if you are looking for something like the Cartier Tank Solo, this is a classic design. It is a watch that can be worn for any occasion. And it was just the toe that was dipped in that luxury watch world that then sparked her interest in the next watch. Now the next watch is gonna be a Bomber Mercier. This is gonna be a Hampton Classic. Now she lusted after this watch for quite some time. And the reason why she lusted after this watch was simply the strap. She loved that dual banded strap, that wrap around that is indicative of a more casual watch, but a more fancier watch, something just different on the wrist. A lot of people wear leather bands or stainless steel bracelets. It's not often you see a double banded leather bracelet on a watch. So it just spoke out to her and she did everything she could to get this watch brand new. This Bomber Mercier, which is a quartz watch, comes in at about $2,400. She spent every dollar of it and she doesn't regret any of it. She absolutely loves this Bomber Mercier. Now the next one on the list is her first try at a vintage luxury watch, and that is going to be the Rolex Marconi. Now I did a video about the Rolex Marconi and the history of the Marconi brand, and it's extremely interesting. This one, specifically the era, is about 1950s, and it is a manual wine watch. It is not the Rolex you'd expect, especially with today's Rolexes. However, the Marconi was branded as the best line for Rolex at the time between the 1920s and the 1960s. This was the best brand. The Marconi was only for the top of the line, and she absolutely loves this watch. It is rose gold, and with that rose gold, she had me get her a 18 karat rose gold bracelet to match for her birthday and Christmas, and the combo just looks absolutely beautiful together. Now, she's going through the aches and pains of owning a vintage watch because the kind of flywheel inside doesn't necessarily want to balance correctly. So oftentimes when the watch stops, you got to give it a little love tap after you wind it to get it going again. It's just one of those things that you have to understand when it comes to vintage watch collecting. Not all vintage watches are bad. Not all bad watches are vintage. And you just have to be extra careful of everything that you're doing. I even told her, don't wear it to work. Don't bang it around because you don't want to break that crystal. You don't want to scratch it too bad. You don't want to ding it up. You don't want to break the movement because there are no parts anymore and it's going to cost an arm and a leg to get it fixed. Outside of that, it has been serviced freshly. Everything looks great on it and she really does love this watch. This is her, her crown jewel of her collection. 
and it's not the most expensive. She bought it for about $1,100 used, of course. Now, the next one on the list is a Movado. Now, the Movado is the first luxury watch she bought herself, and she did it last year. We were in Las Vegas. We had a wonderful time, a beautiful trip, and she went to a premium outlet mall, and uh, she found a store that had Movados. And the Movado is, it is a very classic design. It's very minimalist. It's very classy. She chose a two-tone. It was the only two-tone luxury watch she owned. And of course, people are going to argue that Movado is really not luxury, but it is a Swiss brand. It's entry level to the luxury. And this was the first watch she ever bought herself that was considered luxury. She really did treat herself. Of course, I was there with her, so I made sure she got a great deal because it's still a Movado. She picked this thing up for about $500. This is a men's watch. However, it does fit her wrist quite nicely. In 2023, 2024, larger watches, not Invicta large, but slightly larger watches are okay on the wrists of even smaller, more dainty women. And to be fair, this watch looks pretty damn good on her wrist. Again, her first luxury watch. After that, Again, this is the first luxury watch she bought herself, and it will definitely not be her last. Now, the next one is going to be the Bomber Mercier Hampton Classic. This one specifically she bought herself, so it's in this collection, but it has transitioned into both of our watches. This thing is about 34 millimeters, but it doesn't wear at 34 millimeters. It more wears at about 36 millimeters. This thing is, again, a quartz watch. Almost all of these are going to be quartz watches, and that's only because, like most women, I'm not saying all women, but like most women or most collectors, they don't really want to go and have to change the time every single time on their automatic watch if they haven't worn it for a while. That's the way she is. That's the way Jamie is. Jamie likes to be able to pick up the watch, know that it's about the time it needs to be, and just kind of put it on her wrist as a piece of jewelry, not necessarily a timekeeping device, and just wear it so it looks great. She doesn't have to worry about changing the time or anything like that. Uh, that's why whenever she wears her Rolex, I end up winding it for her and setting the time so she doesn't have to worry about it. Same thing with this Bomber Mercier. Now this again is a men's Hampton Classic, and it looks great on her wrist and my wrist as well. In fact, here is a picture of me wearing the Bomber Mercier Hampton Classic and her wearing her Rolex Marconi at dinner that we just had a couple nights ago to celebrate her birthday. And last but not least, it's got to be a smart watch. Now, she does have an Apple watch that she tends to wear sometimes when she's at work, but not that often. She wanted to dress up her smart watch by getting something like this Garmin Lux. Now, this thing came in at about $450, so it's not a cheap watch, and it, doesn't, and it definitely doesn't offer a lot of the functionality that an Apple watch would offer, but it does it in a more classier way. It does offer some functionality, but it's more classy as you see here. It has a basic analog design, and when you tap that sapphire crystal, you can see that the back of the dial lights up because it's an LED screen that blends into the dial. You can swipe the sapphire crystal, and you can see that it offers plenty of functionality, the basic smartwatch stuff, right? Hydration, steps, right? weather when it's connected to your phone, messages when it's connected to your phone. It's just a smartwatch with class. I don't like Apple Watches. I think they're ugly. I think they are just adding an additional electronic to your life, right? Like we are all attached to our phone right now and a smartwatch, an Apple Watch, specifically an Apple Watch, just brings my phone to my wrist. This thing, if you need a smartwatch, it kind of classes it up just a little bit. You know, this is in rose gold with that sapphire crystal, and Garmin is a brand that is known to have high quality stuff, and this was her smartwatch for a very long time. She's never really not into smartwatches anymore that much. She likes her you know, Bomber Mercier and her Cartier, her Rolex the most. So those are the ones that get the most watch time. Now she does have a lot of other watches on the list. So at the end of 2024, because this is the end of 2023, 
beginning of 2024. Um, I know that there's probably at least gonna be two to three more watches. Every time I look at her on her phone, she's always looking at watches, whether or not be brand new Swiss watches, whether or not be vintage watches, and she's also looking at vintage things for the house. She loves to do interior design, she loves to decorate, and she's always looking at the next thing. She is like me. When the bug bites and the itch needs to be scratched, it's never scratched. It's always just a constant nagging pain for the next thing to collect. So what do you guys think about this video? Just a quick video showcasing my fiance's love of horology. Not near what mine is, but it is coming along. And I can tell you that at the end of our life, we're gonna be broke with a lot of watches or we'll have a lot of watches and we'll probably still be broke. Anyway, remember guys, if you can, hit that subscribe button if you made it this far, it's free. Hit that like button, it really does help the algorithm. Make sure you hit that notification bell. As always, I appreciate you guys stopping by, and I will see you guys in the next one.